So since September 2022, there have been some updates on how you need to submit your photos for your spouse's sponsorship application. So in this video, we'll cover what are the instructions for personal photo as well as your wedding or ceremony photos, how many should you submit, how to prepare them, compress them, and what format to use, how to write description and context, and finally, where and how to submit them in the online portal. Let's begin. So here's your guide 5289. Always start with this. The latest forms and all the instructions can be found here. So if you scroll down, click on step three, complete the application and scroll down even further. Here you'll get to the document checklist section. So click on this. Here you select your category. We'll stick to spouse for this case. Select your country. And then once you click on get checklist and forms, here you'll get your document checklist. Okay, so since this is a spousal sponsorship, 5533 is the document checklist that's going to be applicable to you. So here's your document checklist. So if you scroll down to page seven here, there are two photo sections. Number one is the photo section for the principal applicant. This is where the principal applicant uploads their personal photo and the photos of any accompanying family members. And then if you scroll down under proof of relationship, which is section seven, if you don't answer yes to any of these questions 7a, 7b, 7c and 7d, then you have to provide documents in 7e. And inside 7e, here's the photo section for your wedding, customary celebrations, engagement and or outings. So let's cover both these sections one by one. All right, so first up is your personal photo. So this is the photo that will be uploaded by the principal applicant, All right? So if you click on this link here, it's gonna give you the instructions on how to get this photo ready. So as you can see, this is the front of the photo and they've given the dimensions and everything here. And this is the back of the photo with the details that should be mentioned on the back of the photo. And if you scroll down, all the instructions and detail are given here. So I'm just gonna explain how my wife, the principal applicant got this done. So that will give you some idea on how you can get that done also. So basically she just took a printout of these instructions and went to a digital photography studio and she had her photo taken there. Then the photo that was given to her, meaning this photo which I hold in my hand right now, this is the photo exactly according to the dimensions that are listed in these instructions. And on the back of this photo, she actually wrote these details. So her name, her date of birth, and the date the photo was taken, as well as the name and address of the photography studio. And once she was done, what she did was simply put this photo inside a scanner and scanned the front as well as the back of this photo into a single PDF document. So here is the scan of the photo that I just showed you. Here is the front and here is the back with all the details. And it doesn't really have to be a PDF format. You can even use JPEG or JPG. But as long as you have the front and back and it adheres to the instructions that are mentioned here in this link, you should be fine. Now, when you will open this digital photo in your computer, then whatever software you use, whether you use an Adobe or a photo viewer or preview in Mac, this might not be the scale that the actual photo is. And that's fine. Don't get too caught up in the scale because when you are doing an online submission and you're literally uploading a scanned image, you're not really going to have much window to worry about the scale of the image, all right? As long as you got the job done right with the photographer with this photo and you scanned it, the front and the back, you should be fine. All right, so here's the online portal where we'll upload this photo and we are inside the principal applicant's account. So in this case, assume that this is my wife's account who was the principal applicant. Then inside your application, if you scroll down all the way past these forms, you will find the supporting document section. So this is where you will upload your photo. So as you can see, here are the acceptable file types. So PDF is one of the file types that is acceptable. Our file is the PDF type, so we are good to upload it. And the file size should be four megabytes maximum. So if I can quickly go here and check the size of the photo, as you can see, it's one megabyte, so this is good. And I've labeled it according to the instructions mentioned here. So last name, first name, document type. So last name, first name of my wife, the principal applicant. And since it's the photo, I've simply labeled it as photo. So now we are ready to upload. So you'll select photos because that's the category we are working with. And here you can simply upload the photo that you just prepared. So that's how you can take care of your personal photo of the principal applicant. If you have accompanying family members, then all their photos will be uploaded similarly. Now let's talk about the fancy stuff. So as the instructions say, photos of your wedding, customary celebrations, engagement and or outings. Provide a maximum of 20 photographs to support your relationship taken at different times and places. And then you provide a separate document providing a brief description of context of each photo provided. So let me first show you how I would approach this and then we can discuss some alternatives. So it says a maximum of 20 photographs. So just to make it simple, I've selected 20 photographs from various events in our wedding. So as you can see, I've put them in four different categories, engagement, haldi, main wedding ritual and reception. 
And obviously these categories can vary depending on the religion and faith that you follow, but the idea is the same. So if I can quickly show you these pictures, these are five photos from engagement. So as you can see, these photos are clearly visible, identify me, the sponsor and my wife, the applicant, and other people are also present here. Same thing for the wedding ceremony. As you can see, the sponsor and applicant clearly identifiable. Other people are also present. So these are good photos. And same thing for the wedding reception photos after the wedding. As you can see, the sponsor and applicant are clearly identifiable. The pictures look clear. Other guests and family are also present. So this basically makes for a good proof that the wedding was publicly acknowledged and all these photos look decent. Maybe not this one. Don't upload these kinds of photos where the sponsor and applicant look really scared. I don't know what happened in this one, but the rest of them still look good, right? So once you've selected your photos, the next step is to prepare them for upload. So coming back to the online portal, the acceptable file types are PDF, JPG and JPEG. As you can see, all these images are JPEGs, so they are good. This format is supported by the online portal. The next instruction is the file size should be four megabytes maximum. So now, as you can see, most of these images are actually upwards of 20 megabytes. So if I try to upload them, the online portal is going to throw an error. So our next task is to get these photos to a size which is less than or equal to four megabytes so that we can upload them to the online portal. So there are multiple ways to compress these images and we'll talk about a few. The easiest one is to go to Google and simply type compress and the type of the image that you're compressing. So since all these are JPEGs, I am going to type compress JPEG right here. Okay, so this link compressjpeg.com will pop up. So you're gonna click this and a lot of people end up using this. My wife actually also used this link. So it works. So let's work with this image engagement 2 for example. As you can see, it's 20.4 megabytes. So then I will upload this engagement 2 right here and it will do its compression. Once it's done compressing, so now I'm simply going to hit download. And then if I look at the compressed file, which is now 1.9 megabytes. So from 20 megabytes to 1.9 megabyte. As you can see, the quality still looks good. The sponsor and applicant are still identifiable. So this is a good image. And you can do the same thing one by one with all the photos that you're going to upload. Now, the only drawback of this method is that you have to upload your images to a third party website. So majority of people are fine with this. But then if you are one of those people who don't really want to upload your personal images to a third party website for issues of security or personal information being leaked onto these websites, then I understand your concern. And then there is another method for you, which you can use, which is much safer. So what you can do is you'll open your drive, Google Drive, and here click on new, open a blank Google document. And here, all you have to do is insert your image. So let's select the image to insert. So upload from computer and let's work with the same image engagement 2 as you can see 20 megabytes open now all i have to do is click on file hit download and download as pdf because remember pdf is an acceptable file type so you can also upload your images as pdf as you can see the file which was 20 megabytes is now 530 kilobytes and the quality hasn't been compromised as much so this is still a good method that you can use if you don't want to upload your images to a third party website for compression you can use the Google Docs method to compress your files and it should work for majority of the file types that you're working with. So here's the list of 20 photos that we just compressed. As you can see, the file type is JPEG, so this is acceptable. Each photo is less than four megabytes. And then I've already renamed these photos according to the instructions. So for example, engagement photos, since there were five engagement photos, this is how I label them. Last name, first name, meaning the last name and first name of the principal applicant. So this is my wife's last name and first name. And then type of the document. So it's an engagement photo and then number of the document. So there are five engagement photos. That's why one, two, three, four, five. So now these photos can be uploaded to the online portal, but there is another step here. Coming back to the document checklist, section 7E, as you can see, please upload a separate document providing a brief description of context of each photo provided. So what I like to do is go to my Google Drive, click on new, then open a blank Google document. And basically I will provide the description and context of all the 20 photos that I have selected in this blank document. And then I will simply download this as a PDF and upload it to the online portal. So here's the document that I've prepared. And I always like to give it a heading and give a little bit of detail about what this document pertains to. So that's why I've written class, applicant, sponsor name, and subject. Description of context of photos as per section 7E, IMM 5533. And then here is a table that I created using this insert command, insert table. 
and then I simply inserted three columns and then I kept adding rows. And basically what I've done is listed events in the first column, photo labels in the second column and description in the third column. This was the sequence of events. That's why I've started with Haldi. And then here are the actual labels of these photos that I've used. So for example, event two is engagement and here are the names of these photos. So again, going back to our folder, here are five photos from engagement and these are the labels of the photos that I've created and that's why I have listed them exactly like that so that the officer will be able to relate the description with the photos. And then I've just provided a brief description and context about each photo. So for example, for these engagement photos, I've just written photo from Apurva and Suyash's engagement ceremony and the date the engagement ceremony took place. You can take the liberty of writing as much description here as you want but I just kept it brief because they're not really expecting you to add tons of description for each photo. Then once I'm done, I'm going to bring my cursor here to the untitled document section to label it. And then we are going to use the same labeling convention, last name, first name of the principal applicant, and then photos description and download this as PDF. As you can see, it's much less than four megabytes. So this will have no problem getting uploaded. Looks pretty neat and organized to me. Now for uploading, you have a couple of options. You can either choose to upload these images one by one, or you can even upload these images in groups, meaning combining them and then uploading them either as a single document or in groups of four or five documents. Now I would lean more towards the combining option as opposed to uploading individually because of some very recent changes that happened to the online portal. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's try to upload all our photos that we prepared in the photos category. So I'm going to click upload and then I'm going to select the compressed images that we prepared after compression. And then we'll just have to start uploading them one by one. So I've uploaded 10 images already, but notice what happens when I start to upload the 11th image. This is the message that I get. You have reached the maximum limit of files you can upload. So this did not used to happen before. I mean, last week itself, when I was writing the script for this video, I tried to upload 20 photos in the same category and I was able to do it. Now, I don't think they're allowing more than 10 documents per category. They might fix this down the line, but as of now, February 15th, 2023, they are not really allowing you to upload more than 10 files per category. So in that case, what you want to do is you can upload 10 photos here in the photo category, come down here, hit this drop down, and then you can select the proof of relationship to sponsor category, or you can even select the other category and upload the remaining 10. So if you want to upload your 20 photos individually, this is one approach you can use, but then that makes it a little disorganized, right? It's not really going to harm your application, but in the spirit of making things more structured and organized, let me show you a much better method, which is to combine these documents. So there's multiple ways, again, you can combine these images. The one that works best for me is the Google document method that I showed you before. Going back to my Google Drive, I'm gonna click on new, open a blank Google document. And then what I'm going to do is locate my compressed files folder. And now what I'm going to do is select images from each category. So engagement, haldi, reception, wedding ceremony and put them in this Google document. And now we will create separate documents from each of these categories. Let me show you how that works. So let's select all these five engagement photos all together. And then what I'm going to do is with them selected, simply drag them and drop them to this Google document. So as you can see, all five engagement photos are here. Now I'll simply label this. So let's call them last name, first name and engagement, just a broader category. Now I'll click on file, download and PDF. It's 2.4 megabytes. So five photos combine into a single document. And if I open this, let's see the quality. So not that bad. The images still look pretty good to me. Obviously the quality has been slightly compromised, but nothing that bad as to affect your application. The officer is easily going to identify the sponsor and the applicant and the images make a good case. So I'll do the same thing with the remaining categories. So again, select the five Haldi photos and export as PDF, then select five wedding ceremony photos, export as PDF. So ultimately I will have four different PDF files each file with five photos inside. So ultimately 20 photos in four different documents. And now that we've reduced the number of documents to upload, we simply go back into the online portal under the photos section, or if you don't want, you can simply upload it under the proof of relationship to sponsors section or the other category. It doesn't really matter. 
I would upload them under the photos section because these are literally photos. And there you go, all 20 photos uploaded through four different files with five photos each. And now you still have five more documents you can upload in this photos category before the online portal will fail on you. So that's the advantage of combining documents and uploading them together as a single document. The idea is to limit the number of documents you're uploading, but not limit the information. So now that we are done with the upload part, remember there is also the description and context part. So we'll have to modify the description according to this new method of combination of images that we've selected. So I've kind of already done that for you. Again, this is Google Documents, and this is the document that I've created. So this part remains the same. This is a little bit of context and description of what this supporting document pertains to. And then here is the table. As you can see, events in the leftmost column, then document labels instead of photo labels because these are all PDF files, and then description. For each event, this is the document that we have uploaded, and this is the exact label of the document in the online portal. And then here is the description for that document. So for example, for last name, first name engagement, the description reads five photos from Apurva and Suyesh's engagement ceremony and the date was December 14th, 2020. So again, before I forget, just to complete the process, hit file, download, PDF, this file is ready. So again, coming back to the online portal, hit upload. And now the description of this is also uploaded in the photo section. So I would prefer this method over uploading your documents individually, for the reasons I just showed you. Or if you really don't want to do this, there is another method. You can just combine all your 20 images into a single document using the same Google documents method that I showed you, export it as PDF, and then provide description altogether. The only problem that I see in combining all your images into a single document would be that your images may get too compressed when you export them into a PDF file, and then they might not really be as clear as you would want them to be. So if it works for you, then go ahead, do that, combine all images into a single document. But if not, then I would stick with this middle ground that you can make groups of four and five, and then upload those as four or five documents just to reduce the number of size in the online portal while still making sure that the images look good. So a lot of applicants often wonder if they could upload like 50 or 60 or even hundreds of photos just to make their application stronger. So again, I'm going to point you back to the instructions. They are asking for a maximum of 20, meaning if you have even a few less than 20, you should still be fine as long as you can make a good case. But they certainly do not expect you to upload dozens of photos over the limit. First of all, it's not in the instructions. And second, think of it from the officer's point of view. It's just too much work for them to handle. So my recommendation would be to stick to the limit, upload a maximum of 20, a few less than 20, or maybe a one or two more than 20 should still be fine but don't just go overboard with uploading your photos. As long as you can make a good case, you should still be fine while staying within the limit. So just like photos, there is another item under section seven, which is proof of contact. That also causes a lot of confusion. So here's a video where I have discussed it in detail. I'll see you there.